science. We get experimental get science. We're curious, non judgmental. This is the mechanic. Oh, yes, this is a super cool one. And I remember when this came out, I guess it was 2013, which is, oof. Uh, y'all i'm like forgetting time on the the full front of it but it was a shock like it went this image went viral this is again a gear shaped look that's part of its legs that the pieces come together and pivot and are able to release to allow the animal to jump and so that is what we're looking at in this image here what we're trying to see now we are at max magnification and this is the area that we would need to be looking at. And y'all, I'm going to full disclosure, even if we pump up the gain and may try to make everything really visible, I don't think we're going to be able to see it because that was the first time it was seen with was with the scanning electron micrograph. I love this slow motion video. Actually engaging with each other. This part here where you can see again the gears coming to just launch that bug. Are the gears measurably different in hardness and chemistry? That is a great question, astronomy show. Unfortunately, so this particular paper is more of a descriptor. Um, and I, I honest, I'll be totally honest with you, I haven't kept up with the lab and its literature to see if they've done a follow-up on it. Given that it's in a plant hopper, my bet is that if there's been any follow-up, it hasn't been on that molecular side that you're asking about. So a lot of these unfortunately are difficult number one to at the time there were no genetic tricks that you can do in there and it would be difficult without any genetic markers to isolate the cell types that you'd be able to identify so that you can figure out like what is the composition of them like what are in terms of development are being released at that at that particular point like what kind of chitin is it you know is it a structurally different chitin that allows for these gears to actually bounce without breaking right um, you could be able to do, you could do a stress test on them. So there is a microscopy method astronomy show called atomic force microscopy. And what you can do is you can you basically push on the sample and that's giving you a measurement of force underneath the scope. But I'm not familiar. I don't think that they did anything on this front on that, which is um, disappointing, but you could, in theory, now do genetic tricks because you'd have CRISPR Cas9 technology now. Be curious to figure out what kind of energy the gears can produce. So they did do high resolution imaging, Putrick, and able to get like the jumping scale of these. And I believe they had a calculation of how much, like the the speed and the velocity that they're able to generate, and I think you should be able to work off those numbers to get the force measurement. But I don't remember offhand what those numbers were. So that would be something that we can look in. I'll look into and see if in the paper they indicated that or not. But it would be neat to see and see if it influenced their their behavior, like or the behavior in um, creating any more of these in any way, which would be kind of neat. But yeah, I wonder too if there's like a, the gear force that is providing those animals with the ability to do that punch. It just seems like, again, I'm just stunned and blown away that something mechanical like this, where again, I'm guilty of it too, if it's like, you know, in humans, like we've invented this, why would it be in nature? But then it's observed in nature as well. And you can see how it functions. It's just really, really cool. I was thinking the same thing it makes you wonder if humans were influenced by creatures to make some of the mechanical advancement like gears. Yeah, Putrick, I am I am not sure what other like visibly that we'd be able to have gears like in what other animals, but it it doesn't matter, right? Because there might have been influences in other animals or from other animals that don't exist today. There was also maybe some kind of fossil record of older more ancient insects that were much bigger that maybe had these sam fit parts more visible um so you never know like yeah how did and it's always a, a philosophical question right that guy that invented the very first gear like what were they thinking and also that also putrick is like the per first person that used fire right to cook food I always chuckle at that thought, I'd be like, hey, this, this this tastes better now. And like, what was that person first thinking? And I don't know, we kind of just, again, philosophically on that front. Let's continue to see what else we can identify on this. 
I want to highlight that the best experiment to have done piece is if they got rid of these gears and then they measured the jump force of these animals, right? Because that would have been the best way of truly saying that these are what are affecting the force at which these animals are jumping. That was not done in part because they don't have any genetic tricks for these animals. There's nothing that can be done at this current time, at least that I'm aware of, in terms of genetics to get rid of these gears and then measure the jumping. What they're suggesting, though, is these two let, uh, components, which are on our sample, if we look at the underbelly, in this region here, it'll be this right here, that synchronizes the legs so that they push at the exact same time and very rapidly. It almost like cocks the legs back and then allows for there to be a lot of force to be pushed um, as a, a function of that synchronization. And so they were saying it's approximately 12 miles an hour and you're accelerating in the, in the metric of milliseconds, which is quite remarkable that we have something like that. My ideal experiment though, would be um, to mess with the gears. And uh, Gwen says, the moment we mess with the gears, they cannot perform well to be able to gather valid data, like the haltiers and the dipter, they just evolved to have them. So I, well, so in my mind, Gwen, what we'd be able to do is genetically modify these animals so that leg-wise, everything is still there, but they're just missing these little gears. And that's all with developmental programming. So you'd have to figure out, you'd actually probably have to do single cell sequencing during the developmental stage, figure out what cell populations are turning into those gears and what genes are being expressed there that make them different from the rest of the surrounding cells. Once you identify that, you can turn off those genes and those particular cell types. You still have the legs that can have like this interaction, you just remove the gears. And so they're not making contact now, but they can still turn. And if the hypothesis is correct, that those are the exact things that are driving this jump force you should be able to see it that would be my take to really nail down what the findings are because as a geneticist i'm always like okay is it necessary for the behavior and then is it sufficient for the behavior sufficiency here the experiment to test that would be near impossible because what you'd have to do is you'd have to add these gears to an animal that doesn't have them already. And even if you did add the gears, there's a behavior embedded in these genetics, right? And so with that behavior, you can't adjust for, you can't account for that behavior. So even if we created an insect that didn't usually have these gears before, and now they have them, if they're not jumpers, it's not nothing's gonna happen right they're just gonna walk around with tiny nubs on their legs and that that's that so you could so you could demonstrate that it's necessary but sufficiency in this case you can only demonstrate that you figured out the gene required for the the gear nubs but you couldn't demonstrate that those are sufficient for these jumping ability um, which is you know an important important distinction I think by the way I shouldn't be so stupid excited, but seeing the detail in those legs, like look at how good those details look in these legs. See how we can see the individual leg hairs coming out and those are just like the sensory bristles of the leg. And then even individual, each individual leg foot turgite you're able to identify that allows that those feet to bend. Again, this new camera, I tell y'all, is, a, is, a, is an absolutely look at a game changer. Feet, look at its little feet, see? If I'm forcing my eyes, um, maybe there is something here, but if I didn't know to look for it right there, I'd still say we'd want a higher res camera and higher res microscope to really make out. The power of this dissecting scope is we're actually magnifying 45 times right now. The 45 time magnification, so built into the microscope lens, there's a 10x magnification, and then we've zoomed in even further, a 4.5, so 4.5 times 10, so we have that 45 magnification on this microscope. We would need 
the optical system would have to be different independent of the camera so we can get a better zoom in on there. This is 30 million years old. This is a piece of ancient amber that we're looking at underneath the microscope. And these are actually the old images, so you can actually see some of the before and after. So bug kit, we have a brand new camera. Um, it's much higher resolution, so we can make out a lot more detail. And so we were taking some of these images here, and we were then able to, we're now gonna compare it to the images that we were taking currently. What is neat on this one, you can see each of the individual eye cells called the omatidium, singular omatidia, plural. The underside, where we were trying to look at for the last sample, this is what the underside looked like. And it was just, it has this beautiful pattern on it, but it made it so we could not see the underside of this animal. And also, I'm gonna like rag on the old camera, you can see that we're getting a lot of pixelation as we were zoomed in. On this new sample, we're able to see both the the ventral and the, dor the dorsal side, no problem at all. Uh, and again, we're able to get a lot more detail. We found a really cool specimen in the amber today. Um, it is, actually I'd say it's one of the best samples so far.